how you guys doing? Welcome back to another episode of Soldier Talk, the podcast. I'm your host, Staff Sergeant McPherson, and on this show, we discuss military topics with current and prior service members. Today, I have a special guest. I have Staff Sergeant Hamley with me. How you doing? I'm doing good. How you doing, Sergeant McPherson? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, before we get started, kind of introduce yourself to the people. Let them know where you're from and stuff like that. Okay. Um, I'm Staff Sergeant Desmond Hamlet. Uh, I'm from Kentucky, South Carolina. Okay, so you said first. Uh, how long have you been serving in the uh, military? I've been serving. Um, ten just hit ten years in October. Yeah, ten years in October. And yeah. what? And what's your MOS? Sixty-eight Juliet Medical Logistics Specialist. Okay, so uh, we're gonna start off with you uh in South Carolina. So you say you grew up in. Cane Street, South Carolina. Cane Street, South Carolina. So kind of tell the people, like, uh, what's the environment growing up there? Like, how was it? So Cane Street, South Carolina, to me growing up, it was uh, it was actually fun. You know, it was just small town. Everybody know each other. Um, a lot of dirt roads. Um, hardly no stoplights. You know, stuff like that. So it was like real country, you know, and family-oriented place. Okay, uh, so did you like grow up like with your dad or mom or stuff like that? Yes, I grew up with my uh, my mom and my uh, stepfather. So all of us grew up um, in the same house with my my younger sisters and brother. So okay, uh, kind of explain, kind of like uh, I want to say, did you play any sports growing up or like did you uh, was you active and like what type of school student you were you in school? I was. <laughs> I was a class clown, so, so um. But as far as like sports, I played um. I played basketball, I played football, you know, around the neighborhood and in the uh, street rec football, rec basketball, down to like middle school, junior high, high school, stuff like that. So, so I was pretty active, you know. But more of like a class clown, you know, outgoing person. Yeah. Okay. So what kind of, what kind of made you familiar? made you familiar with like the military and like what kind of uh drew you to that this type of lifestyle um to the military lifestyle mm-hmm. um i never thought I, I never thought about joining the military until um i went off to school after high school you know some people graduate high school go straight to the army or the military um but i went to college first um i went to Brazil university in decatur I went there for about a year, um, didn't work out. And my uncle, who's here, he was uh, he was already here in Fayetteville, and he was in, he was at Fort Bragg. He did four years. He got out. He stayed in. And then when things didn't work out in college, um, I called him, or he called me, and he told me, "Are you not going back to King Street? Come here to Fayetteville, join the, join the army." And then I was like, "All right, I'll join the army." And I came here, and um. It didn't work out at first, you know. I was, I was taking the ASVAB, didn't do too well on it. Then I ended up getting a job here, overstayed my welcome. Is when I finally like buckled down, went back to the recruiting station, and then I, uh, that's when I, I passed the ASVAB. Then went off to basic training in 2012, October 2012. The rest was history. Okay, so uh, when you say you uh, you start working the job, then you buckle down. Like what what was you doing? Um, as far as me, w- as far as my job or buckling down. Yeah, when you said you had to buckle down before you oh. took the test again. Oh, I just basically, um, basically start getting the books, study, study guides. Um, I get off on work. I would take the whole. It was like they used to have back then. They had the whole like practice test online. So I used to. Um, so after work, I do the practice test. You know, study. When I felt like I was ready, that's when I went back to the recruiting station and I uh, I passed finally. Okay, so when <laughs> when you passed your test, what made you choose the MOS you did? Honestly, I didn't choose it. I didn't choose it. Um, it was given to me, you know, because I did, I passed the test. I didn't score too high on it, so they offered me. Um, uh, 68 Juliet, you know they showed they sold it to me, showed me the videos and um, and I thought it was a th- I thought it was I still 
I think it's a good job to this day. So I'm glad I picked it. Well, I didn't pick it. I'm glad they picked it for me. So, so yeah. And kind of explain to the people what exactly do you do? What what exactly is a six to eight Juliet? So a six to eight Juliet is basically um, it's basically medical supplies. We work with medicine, medical supplies. So throughout my career, um, I was in medcom. So in the hospital, you know, we support we support the whole hospital with medical with medical needs and stuff like that. So we get like three to f- three to five or three to six different trucks. Um, Fill up with medical supplies. We process them. Um, we put them in the uh, in their um, correct storage. Um, put them on the sh- on the shelves, and then we issue them out to the uh, different wards and the clinics of the hospitals and stuff like that. With uh, with medical with medical supplies and stuff. So. Okay, yeah, that does sound kind of like an interesting job. So, uh, basic training in AIT. So. When did you go to basic training? I went to basic training on um, October of 2012. October 2012. Mm-hmm. And, of course, is at Fort Jackson, right? Yep, Fort Jackson. It was supposed to be set Fort Sill, but they changed it to Fort Jackson. Yeah. Okay, so basic training. Like, what you remember vividly from basic training? First, the first day. Explain the first day. Getting off the bus. Is I'm... Um, like basic, not the not the the um what they put us put us at the first uh what it's called when you first go there you gotta go to reception yeah so not reception but just the first in processing oh just yeah. day zero yeah yeah so day zero all right I'm gonna do so day zero mm-hmm. going to basic training I just remember going to it was tough it was back in 2012 it was it was real tough so we went on the bus I was we had we. We didn't get no sleep in reception. We was waking up. We was getting like two to three hours of sleep. So when we finally uh, got the basic training, they told us it was a bus ride. They told us to put our head down. We couldn't look up to see where we was going. So so when we finally get to our destination, that's when they came on the bus. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> they started yelling, get off, get off the bus, da, da, da. It was like a culture shock. Where I come from, you know, came from South Carolina. Everybody know each other. You know, everybody nice. So I came. So they told us to put our rucksack rucksack above our heads. They tell us to get in formation, put our rucksack down, or turn it upside down, empty out all our stuff. Okay. Stuff like that. So they made y'all empty out all y'all stuff. Yeah, out out the rucksack and stuff. Oh y'all. Yeah. Okay. So we did the, we did the um. Basically seeing, because they gave us a packing list before we went, so basically seeing that we had everything that was on our packing list. And if we didn't, you know, we know what was coming next. We get smoked, and then they take us to the comic, to the uh, shop at whatever, the mini mall to get whatever we was missing. And But they, but it, the way they did it, and it was so crowded, so when you dump your stuff out, you was, you had one person to the uh, right of you, one person to the left of you. So you had to keep make sure you your stuff don't get mixed up with everybody else. Mm-hmm. It was like it was like real hectic. It was like real, real hectic. You know, something that I, I you know I never experienced. So it was it was crazy. Yeah. Okay. So what was your impression like? Your impression of that like like because. I mean, like, was it like a? You said it wasn't a culture shock, like, so your no, first it was no, it was a culture shock. So my first impression was, you know, because you know, of course, I wasn't familiar with, you know, you hear things, but I wasn't familiar with, uh, or with the military. So my first impression was, is it gonna be like this, you know, for the rest of my career? Is is it is gonna have somebody in my face, you know, yelling at me? telling me what I need to do, just yelling, just constantly yelling at me. So that was my first impression, like, damn, it, is it going to be like this throughout my whole career? You know, so that was my first impression. Okay, so uh, you got anything that stand out to you, like, as far as anything that spectacular happened where, you know, uh, basically some crazy that happened during basic training, like, you got one of them stories? Something that's pops out to you. Something 
crazy. Um, uh, no, I just no. I don't think nothing crazy. I just thought like I really, I I took it serious because I, I wanted to get out of there. So I just t- I just remember me taking like when drill sergeant said something was gonna happen and it didn't happen and and this was gonna happen. I believed that. So so my whole thing was um like every every task we did. If they said like, all right, if y'all don't get through this, like you getting recycled, you going back to reception, you gonna stop. I believe that, you know. So I just I just remember I ain't gonna lie, I cried I cried in basic train. I just remember you for real. Yeah, I cried. Cause I uh it was this test we had it was this written test um we did and then I, I failed it or whatever and then started like, Oh, the cycle, da 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 and I already I already was like weeks in, probably like a month in. So they telling me I'm about to start over. So I just remember, um, I remember just breaking down. You know, I thought, you know, I thought it was it. I was like, that's it. I'm like, if they make me start over, I was thinking like, I'm gonna just leave. You know, I wasn't about to st- start over. So I just remember, you know, breaking down. You know, and one of the drill sergeant, you know, you know, besides, you know, uh, you know, aside from the, the yelling and stuff like that, you had some that would encourage you, like, hey, you know, you can take this test again. Pass it, and then you're gonna be all right. You know, you're gonna graduate. You know, they encouraged us too. It wasn't all about the yelling and stuff. So I just remember being almost broken down. You know, I wanted to quit. That was the that's that's the only thing I can remember that that happened. That was like, I thought it was it for me. So okay, so uh, AIT. So AIT. How long was you guys is AIT? Oh, it's short. It was um, six weeks. Six weeks for a six to eight Juliet. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how long it is now, but it was six weeks back then. I think it's still the same, or a little more. But it was six weeks. That's pretty short. Yeah, it was short. Yeah. So after that short amount of time, you what was your first duty station? My first duty station was um, Aberdeen Proving Grounds, Maryland, APG. Yeah, I never heard of that. Where, yeah, where is that at? That's duty station out there. So it's um. You heard of Fort Meade, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like an hour and some change away from Fort Meade and Fort Detrick. So it's in that area, you know, in the Maryland area, like forty five minutes away from Baltimore and stuff. So yeah, it's a small it's a small post. You know, it was like it's it was it's not like the what people call the real, you know, the real army. It's like real relaxed. It's like a real relaxed environment. Okay, uh, and when you got there, like, did you have, like, a sponsor? Like, did they show you around your u- new unit and stuff like that? Uh, so when I first got there, it was my first impression. It wasn't It wasn't good. I didn't, because my, my sponsor was, um, he, was a, he was a staff sergeant. He was a staff sergeant, but he was a um, 68 Alpha, which is a uh, medical maintenance. You know, so, it, we, you know, the, the medical uh, 68 Juliet's work alongside. 68 alphas so you know he um you know he took me he took me places to get stuff in my barracks room and stuff like that and you know but as far as like you know you know showing me around the unit you know uh giving me heads up of what to look look out for what not to look out for you know it wasn't really it wasn't really um he wasn't really a big help in that aspect of it just like seemed like to me was like a check the block thing for him you know okay so how did that affect you like so you saying that made an impression on you so it matters when when people you can tell when people like yeah. only doing things yeah like yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah 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 you can tell. just because they have to do yeah, it yeah yeah that's how <laughs> yeah yeah that's how it came off to me so you can tell like when somebody somebody's just doing you just doing this because you have to do it you know what i'm saying like you don't want to you don't want to really do this, you know, like, you know, show me the ropes or show me this or show me that. So I, I caught on to that real quick from him, you know, so so that was my that was my first because he ended up being my um my first line supervisor. So that was my first, you know, my first time witnessing like, you know, like leadership like that, like toxic leadership is what they call it. So, yeah. OK, so. You talking about leadership, so 
uh, what qualities do you think a leader should have? What quality? Well, my main, th- what I always harp on, what I always tell people now, like the most important thing to me is being, you know, cultural awareness, you know, because when I came in, the leadership I had, I had got when I first got in, it was all about um, you're in the army, so you're in the army, act like it, act like it, you know. And never, without never n- trying to get to know me, you know, as a person, as a soldier, and mold me into the best version of myself. So I just feel like, I just feel like leaders need to be culturally aware of where these people, because soldiers, they come, we come from all different walks of life. So it's not an easy transition to, you know, come into the military so you know I, I you know I encourage leaders to you know just be aware of where soldiers come from and try to you know try to get to know them and um and mold them to the best version of them of themselves instead of because I was told there was other soldiers there I was always told you see that soldier right there you see how high speed he or she is you need to be like that you need to be like when I first got in I was telling I was being told to be like other, other people. people instead of you know them molding me into being the best version of, of myself, you know, which I get now, that which I am now, you know, of course. So, you know, just being culturally aware, you know, getting to know your soldiers, getting to know, you know, who they are and where they come, where they come from. That's what I say. Okay, so he just explained to you guys uh, what he thinks a leader is. So, what I the basically the, the main thing was I was want to say was uh I was gonna ask you what do you think a leader is overall? Um, what you think a good leader is overall, but you kinda explain the qualities of what you think a leader should be. Okay. So that's basically what I wanna say. So what is a good leader to Sergeant Hamlet? Like, what is it? Um a good leader to me is a, a leader a leader who just, because I'm not more so concerned about what a leader knows. I'm more concerned about a leader that cares, you know, a leader that shows that you you care. You're not just here to do a job, you know, because you have to do it, you know. Show, you know, show us you care. Um, show us you're, you know, like you just, you know, just, just caring, just caring <laughs> basically, you know. You know, because a lot of people don't care. You know, a lot of people don't care. You know, so and so what and you a lot of people know a lot of stuff. They know a lot of stuff. They are knowledgeable on a lot of things, but they don't care about the the soldiers. And what you mean by caring? Like basically going out their way or something, going out their way to show that they, you know, like yeah, just things like yeah, things like that. Going out of your way to just show like. Just, just, just being there, you know, when you're so, when, when you're so tasked out, you know, show your soldiers that, just show your face. You don't gotta do all the work or do all the handiwork. Just show your face. Um, just uh, when 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 soldiers have issues, um, be there for them. Show that you're you're there for them. Show that that you are pro- approachable. That they can approach you with any issue that may arise. So, so basically, you know. Just being there, basically, you know, just being there and just showing that you, you know, you're there for your soldiers. Okay, so what is so now that you explain what is a, a leader, so uh, kind of like uh, if it was a brand new soldier, so a brand new soldier coming to the army, what advice would you give to them uh, looking ahead? Like, what if they don't know what to expect? They don't know what they about to get themselves into. What type of advice would you give them to – what type of advice would you give them? Um, the advice I – well, a new soldier, a new soldier that coming in, the advice I give them is um, is basically uh, – just basically I'll, I'll just tell them – I'll just tell them because you got to have room to – you know, to grow. So I'll just tell them, just come in. Just, you know, because when you're a soldier, you got you got this most simple job. Do what you're told. 
you be at the right place at the right time in the right uniform and show military bearing at all times. You know what I'm saying? And then and that'll do the rest. That's all soldiers got to do. You know, it seems hard to to most, but that's all they got to do when they when they on the up and coming. You know, so I just tell them just just do yeah, just that. Just do what you told. You know, if you don't if you don't if you don't like something, you know, um, approach it respectfully, tact tactfully, and um and and, and go from there. You know, because because you can't. Because of course, you know, some soldiers they come from different areas or different parts of the world and then their culture might be something else in, in the army you know it's a set of rules so i'll say like you know just just try to just approach the situation in a in a in a, in a different manner to 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 how i mean different from how they normally approach a situation you know when they gets when they get to that point you know so i just yeah that's why i say that's the advice I give. Okay, so uh, you guys have met Staff Sergeant Hamlet. Uh, he basically gave y'all a rundown on everything, as far as leadership. Uh, make sure you guys follow the podcast on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at Soldier Talk the Podcast. Uh, in closing, uh, Sergeant Hamlet, you got anything else for for the people? No, I'm good. Good to be. Um, thank you for having me on your uh, platform, man. It's a dope uh, setup. So appreciate it. Do this again. Appreciate it. Mm-hmm. So this has been another episode of Soldier Talk the Podcast, and I'll see you guys. Again.